What's up guys, Asian here again with another build video. Today we're going to be going over the Necromancer tank. So, like the rest of the build videos, this patch, not much has changed between Dragon Hold and Harrow Storm. Uh, a couple of tweaks here and there just to kind of better optimize the build, but other than that, not much in terms of gear and skills. Necromancer tank still pretty much remains where it has been in relation to other tanks, uh, being a really great ultimate battery and another source of major vulnerability if you don't have enough Necromancer DPS to kind of get max uptime on it but not really offering anything really in terms of group utility. Uh, they have a lot of unique tool, or I shouldn't say unique, but they have a lot of interesting tools to get a lot of different debuffs and buffs, but all of these are not unique to the Necromancer, and so really Necromancer tanks are kind of there as more of an ultimate battery. Uh, again, kind of add a little bit more major vulnerability uptime if you absolutely need it um, but beyond that uh, they are kind of outclassed a little bit by dk tanks and arguably warden tanks as well just like the rest of our build videos there will be no gear in this video we'll be, we went over that in the tanking gear video which should be popping up in the upper right hand corner right about now so if you're interested in knowing what gear you should be running as a tank go ahead and check out that video and then come back here for the skills as well as a brief discussion on necromancer tanks how to run them and how they differ from other classes when it comes to tanking so let's go ahead and get started here first with our front bar so on our front bar, this is the sword and board bar. We have a ransack. Uh, so you can go with either morph of puncture. So you can either go ransack or pierce armor. Ransack will provide minor protection and pierce armor will provide major breach. So it really depends on which one you need more of. Uh, generally speaking, major breach is a fairly common debuff. Uh, healers can usually apply it by applying elemental drain, for example. So ransack is going to be a little bit better. Uh, you do have a class source of minor protection, but that does use magicka and much more Magicka than Ransack uses Stamina, uh, so it might be more beneficial to run Ransack for the minor protection rather than that class ability. So options are there, uh, so just kind of pick whichever one you prefer. Then we have Heroic Slash for the minor heroism and minor maim. You gotta have that minor heroism there just to help improve your Warhorn uptime. For our self heal, we have Hungry Scythe. You can also go with the other morph if you'd like. The other morph does give you a little bit of uh, better uptime with off balance because every third cast will set enemies off balance assuming they are not immune to it. Uh, both of them do heal you for the exact same amount though so it doesn't really matter which one you're going for. Uh, Hungry Scythe gives you a very small heal over time with it as well uh, so if you're just looking for raw healing Hungry Scythe is going to be the better option. Ruinous Scythe also uses stamina so uh, you will need to micromanage your stamina a little bit more if you are going to be using Ruinous Scythe as your self-heal. I personally prefer Hungry Scythe because it uses Magicka uh, compared to Ruinous Scythe. Usually off-balance is covered by a healer or by you running a Lightning Staff on the back bar. Then we have Necrotic Potency. This is kind of the bread and butter for a Necromancer tank. This is what gets us our ultimate battery sort of status here. Well, basically allows you to summon corpses that are around you, giving you six ultimate for each corpse and healing you, giving you a very small heal over time, or just a very brief heal over time uh, for each corpse that you happen to uh, absorb. Uh, while it's also slotted, your damage taken is reduced by 3%, so you get a little bit of additional mitigation. Not much, 3% in the grand scheme of things as a tank doesn't really translate to a huge amount of additional mitigation, but every little bit can help out here. Uh, so definitely an ability you must have as a Necromancer tank. Next we have Beckoning Armor. Uh, so this gives us our major resolve. It also acts as a chains. Uh, you can activate every 3 seconds, um, so it's not going to be as fast as a DK's Unrelenting Grip or even a Warden's uh, Frozen Device, Frozen Portal, uh, but it's still a class ability and it's passive, so you don't necessarily have to use it all the time. You just sort of activate it once, and yes, while it will be slower, uh, it'll still you don't have to like continuously activate. You don't have to target enemies that are far away from you. Uh, the real benefit of using Beckoning Armor, though, is that it does create a corpse when the effect ends or if you recast it after 10 seconds has elapsed. Uh, so this basically just helps create corpses for you to use with Necrotic Potency. So even if there is nothing to chain in, you still will probably want to run it anyways just to generate that corpse so you get some more ultimate from running Necrotic Potency. Then on our back bar, this is the Lightning Staff bar or Frost Staff or Bow, depending on what weapon you're using on the back bar. We have Inner Rage as our ranged taunt. 
We have balance to help out with our magicka sustain. Uh, so if you feel like you don't really need this ability, you can swap this out. Uh, but I do recommend having balance here to just sort of maintain your magicka. Then we have Blockade of Storms. If you're running the Frost Staff, this will become Blockade of Frost. And if you're running the Bow, you should be running Endless Hail. This would help proc your enchants. For Lightning Staff, it also helps uh, proc off balance. Next, we have Intensive Mender. Uh, so you do have two morphs of this ability, uh, Spirit Mender. Spirit Guardian, while it does have some mitigation, lasts for 16 seconds. So you're not going to get this corpse out quite as fast fast compared to intensive vendor uh, which heals for about twice as much but lasts for half as long so eight seconds so again the kind of idea behind running a necromancer tank is to generate as much ultimate as you possibly can so you want the shorter duration uh spirit mender morph in order to get corpses up faster so it will generate a corpse if you use it uh, when it, the ability expires so after eight seconds or if you recast it at after at least four seconds so once half the duration is run out you can recast it and it will still create a corpse so i do recommend running the intensive mender morph here just so you can get the corpse out faster then you have a flex spot here i have mortal coil here one as a self heal and also to help restore stamina now the downside of mortal coil is you do need to target a corpse and the closest corpse is probably going to be right next to you because of your intensive mender or beckoning armor so you will have to kind of direct your attention to the corpse next to you. Now, they did improve the radius where you can target corpses, so this might not be a big deal, especially because you're just right up next to the boss. Uh, but don't expect to be healing anybody else because all the corpses that you generate are going to be, well, they're going to be right next to you. Now, in trash fights, you might be able to get catch other people with your heal, uh, but that's trash fights uh, where you know DPS shouldn't really be in any huge danger of dying for most trash fights uh, but mortal coil also restores stamina so this is how we're going to restore stamina back otherwise we don't really have a source of passively returning stamina to us now you don't have to run this if you're able to maintain stamina by heavy attacking on your sword and board bar then by all means you can swap this out for another ability then we have aggressive warhorn for the major force uptime now going over some other abilities you might want to consider on hand uh, Pestant Colossus or Glacial Colossus uh, if you need to help out with major vulnerability uptime. As a tank, you're probably better off using something like Aggressive Warhorn, depending on whether it's 12-man or 4-man content, but major vulnerability can be beneficial, especially if you already have two tanks. You have, let's say, one tank and two healers running Warhorns. You can swap out your Warhorn for Glacial Colossus or Pestant Colossus as needed. Uh, next, we have Avid Boneyard for the Self Synergy. Uh, so this will just help you maintain Alkosh procs if you're having difficulty uh, getting good Alkosh uptime from synergies from other people. Uh, so it just gives you a little bit of additional leeway here with maintaining Alkosh. Uh, under the Bone Tyrant line, uh, Agony Totem is your source of minor protection. Uh, so you can also you do Remote Totem, but I prefer Agony Totem because it provides a new synergy called Pure Agony, uh, which applies minor vulnerability to anybody within the radius of your Agony Totem uh, when they activate the synergy. Uh, so this is just a very nice way to apply minor vulnerability, especially in trash fights, uh, assuming you don't have like a Nightblade tank or another Nightblade that's able to apply it using Lotus Fan. Uh, so definitely a pretty nice one to, to run here. It also acts as a fear, so it's a hard CC, but uh, it does require two seconds in order to quote-unquote arm. Uh, so just be mindful when you do place it uh, that uh, you do need to wait two seconds in order to, forget, to get that hard CC going. Uh, for another hard CC though, you do have Ghostly Embrace, uh, which also inflicts minor main. Uh, Ghostly Embrace is can be a little bit tricky to aim, so here's what Ghostly Embrace looks like. You can see it's pretty wide, um, and you can snare enemies, but it only snare one enemy at a time, so each of those hands can only snare one enemy. Uh, so you can only snare at most three. Uh, so Agony Totem is going to be a little bit better for large trash fights, uh, but Ghostly Embrace does also inflict Minor Maim, so if you want an AoE Minor Maim, Ghostly Embrace is not a bad option. And under the Living Death line, uh, Expunge and Modify is good if you need a Purge from yourself. You can also go with Hexproof, which just cleanses more um, negative effects off of you. It also has a cost reduction to all abilities when you have it slotted, so that can be beneficial, of course. Um, but you re would really be using this for the purge. Uh, so you're not necessarily going to need to use it in all fights, but it's still uh, plenty useful in those fights where you do have to cleanse things off of you. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. These two are more used for uh, healers, not necessarily for tanks. 
Uh, moving down to the sword and board line here, defensive posture, either morph, and defensive stance, or absorb missile can be beneficial if you know you're fighting something that deals direct damage with a projectile. Absorb missile will heal you, defensive stance will reflect that projectile back. Defensive stance also provides you some additional block mitigation. Um, for the fights where you are going to be using either of these morphs, defensive stance is generally going to be better because it completely negates all damage, well not all damage, but yeah, pretty much all damage. Um, compared to Absorb Missile, which will heal you, and generally speaking, you don't really need the heal because you have either a self-heal or your healers are covering you uh, on that front, so Defensive Stance is generally going to be the more used morph of Defensive Posture. Uh, if you need a Gap Closer, which you do for at least one fight in the game, uh, so that would be the tw the v -Hoff in against the triplets uh, just make sure to have shield charge if you want to morph it morph it to shields and assault but you don't have to morph it at all this is only used maybe in a handful of fights in the game uh, under the Destro staff line elemental drain for four man content is great uh, especially if you're going three dps one tank uh, and then also consider picking up crushing shock as a ranged interrupt uh, on the bow bar the equivalent for the ranged interrupt would be venom arrow under the armor line, if you need some sort of immunity to knock back effects, then you can run Immovable or Unstoppable Brute. You will end up reducing your movement speed by a very large amount, 65% for Unstoppable and 90 to 100% with Immovable. Uh, so just be mindful of that. You will be pretty much a sitting duck, essentially. Uh, you can still dodge roll around with full speed, um, so you'll probably be just end up dodge rolling if you have to move at all. So it does last for 6 seconds, so it's actually a long time to be snared. Um, but you are immune to knock back and disabling effects, so... It is beneficial in certain uh, areas of the game. Uh, let's see here. Under the Fighter's Guild line, uh, if you don't want to wait for Beckoning Armor, if you need to pull things in immediately one right after another, you're going to want to run Silver Leash for that. It does use Stamina, so just be mindful of your Stamina Management. Uh, circular Protection for an AoE Minor Protection and AoE uh, Small Heal. It's not very strong. It's only here 400 every half second. Um, so not you're going to be using it for the heal. This is going to be more for the Minor Protection. Uh, let's see what else. Under the Psychic Order line, either Morph of Meditate here. Uh, this is basically just more sustain, uh, health, magicka, and stamina back. But it is a channel, so you won't be able to block while you're using this ability here. Now, under the Psychic Order line, there is a passive called Deliberation, which gives you major protection while you're channeling. Uh, but this is a 30% reduction compared to block, which is at a minimum around a 60% to 70% reduction in damage incoming. So it's not going to be as strong as just raw blocking. Uh, so just be mindful before you use Meditate to kind of pay attention to the fight, uh, whether you're going to get hit with a heavy attack or anything. Uh, just, so just make sure you're using it at the best moment so that way you're not caught with your pants down, as the saying goes. Make sure to have everything unlocked under the Undaunted line. Each of them has, each of these abilities has their uses. So Overflowing Altar for the Minor Lifesteal as well as the Blood Feast Synergy, which is a very powerful healing synergy. Shadow Soak for the Black Widow Synergy, which is beneficial for stamina DPS, especially bow bow builds. Uh, Inner Rage, obviously for the range taunt. Uh, Bone Surge for the Major Vitality, which is beneficial in those high healing scenarios. Uh, things like Baneful Mark and Execute in Cloud Rest, for example, would be a situation where you'd want to run Bone Surge. An Energy Orb for a heal that just helps proxy from the blades, as well as providing additional source of combustion for the resource return. Under the Alliance War, you have Echoing Vigor as another self-heal and another way to help proxy up Neo Blades. Uh, I recommend using Echoing Vigor instead of Resolving Vigor. Even though Resolving Vigor does have a higher healing done per second on the tooltip, Echoing Vigor can stack on other sources of Echoing Vigor. So if you have like three or four Echoing Vigors going, uh, the heal that you're getting for those three or four ticks is going to be higher than Resolving Vigor. So I always recommend Echoing over Resolving for that reason. Under the support role, uh, Reviving Barrier and Efficient Purge. Uh, so this Reviving Barrier will give you a damage shield and a small heal over time, which is great. It also provides 10% Magicka regen to the Magicka Aid passive. And then Efficient Purge if you need to purge the group. If you need to purge from yourself, you'll be running Expungeon Modify instead. So don't bother wasting Magicka using Purge. In that case, just run Expungeon Modify. Uh, and that pretty much covers it for all the skills you're going to want to have on hand as a Necromancer tank. Now, talking about tanking in general. Uh, tanking in ESO, uh, you kind of have to fit into two roles here. The first one is obviously just to tank things, just be the damage sponge, taunt things, eat damage. But a second role is equally as important, and that's debuffing the enemy 
and buffing their allies. Uh, so these buffs and debuffs can come from various sorts of places. A lot of it will come from sets. So for example, I'm wearing Alkosh and Yolna Cream. Uh, so Yolna Cream will give me the minor courage. And then Alkosh provides a resistance debuff. So maintaining good uptime on those two sets is going to be imperative you know, to good tanking. And then obviously you have skills, uh, so you have things like uh, ma minor maim and minor heroism from heroic slash. So you got to make sure to maintain heroic slash. Uh, if you're running your lightning staff back bar to help with off balance, make sure to have block aid down at all time. Uh, so that's kind of the role of a tank. Uh, the secondary role of a tank is to kind of maintain the buffs and debuffs that you're responsible for. So for example, I'm running Crusher on my back bar, so I want to make sure to maintain my endless hail on my block aid in order to keep up that Crusher enchant uh, on my back bar. And if I'm running the Lightning Staff, it kind of serves a dual purpose because I'm helping out with uh, getting that off-balance uptime as high as I possibly can. So tanking is not just about being a damage sponge, it's also about being a support for your DPS. Now, for Necromancer tanks, you don't really have any sort of unique group debuffs. Uh, you don't have a passive that provides any sort of unique buff or debuff. Uh, you don't have any sort of ability that does something that another ability can't do on another class. So, a good example would be something like Agni Totem, which provides minor protection to the group. But Circular Protection also provides minor protection to the group in a similar radius. So, you know, that minor protection is not necessarily unique to the Necromancer tank. The Necromancer tank just has the ability to use Magicka to cast minor protection compared to stamina uh, on most other classes. Uh, where Necromancer tanks really stand out compared to other classes is their ultimate generation through use of Necrotic Potency. If we go ahead and summon our intensive mender and use our bone armor here, uh, again, when both of these abilities run out, so Tender Mender just ran out, so we have a corpse. Then after 10 seconds, if you re-up uh, Bone Armor, you can see we've generated a corpse here. And you use Necrotic Potency, and you get, in this case, we would get 12 ultimate back because 6 ultimate per corpse. Now, in a trash fight, it's very easy, as you can imagine, with all the adds that are dead or end or dying to hit necrotic potency and get a bunch of ultimate back all at once. Uh, so that's really the strength of a necromancer tank being able to generate uh, all that ultimate super quickly in order to basically get a lot of warhorns out much faster than a typical DK tank or a typical warden tank would be able to. Uh, your ultimate generation can outstrip a warden's ultimate generation even if the Warden has major heroism. Uh, but it is going to be reliant on being able to maintain all those corpses. So one of the hardest parts about playing a Necromancer tank, hold on, <coughs> is maintaining those corpse uptime. So again, if you reactivate Beckoning Armor too early, so three seconds has passed, you won't generate the corpse. You have to wait at least half the duration of the ability. So if I wait until I get up to 10 seconds, so 10 Dana generate the corpse, so uh, you'll find yourself having to recast bone armor fairly often. I actually personally just let Intensive Mender run the full 8 seconds, so I get the full duration of Intensive Mender, uh, and then you can just use Necrotic Potency. The Necrotic Potency does actually have a fairly wide radius, so if I go all the way over here, for example, over here, you can see that yeah, I am able to hit that corpse, so uh, it's not necessarily as wide as, like, say, Ritual Retribution, uh, but it's, it's fairly wide, so if it fits within, like, a Healing Springs radius, you'll probably be able to catch a corpse in your Necrotic Potency. Uh, but that's really how you should play the Necromancer tank, just be an ultimate battery so you can get all your Warhorns up really, really quickly. Uh, but that basically concludes it for this build video. Uh, it's easier to kind of see tanking in action rather than just explain it, so I do recommend checking out, uh, looking at Twitch streams. Uh, Nephis, for example, might play Necromancer tanks here and there. I am still working on getting a Necromancer tank up to level 50. Uh, it's kind of hard to... Um, it's hard for me to kind of get the motivation to level it uh, sometimes. Uh, so I don't have an Necromancer tank uh, yet, uh, but I do recommend looking at uh, videos where I have DK tank. The core concept behind tanking don't really change too much between different classes, it's just your different abilities. Uh, so by taking a look at DK tanks, you can get a sense of how a tank should be played, kind of what you should be prioritizing here, and just adapts the DK abilities to what you have as a Necromancer. But again, that is it for this video. If you guys have any questions at all about tanking or necromancer tanks, feel free to them down in the comment section below, and I'll try to answer those to the best of my ability. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.